the workshop of the Golden Age of Latina Women. My name is Elia Mendoza and I'm the National Vice President for the Elderly. I'm honored to be with you and very glad to be able to join you during this very difficult time for our seniors. As many of you know, we're experiencing firsthand what the pandemic is all about. The latest reports from the Center for uh, Disease Control, the CDC, shows us that as we get older, our risk of severe illness from the COVID-19 goes higher. For example, people in their 50s are at a higher risk than people in their 40s. And of course, people in their 60s or 70s are at a higher risk than people in their 50s. The greatest risk for COVID-19 is among those aged 85 and older. Another important risk for our seniors is isolation and depression. They have nowhere else to go. They don't have cars. They can't drive. They cannot get around. And people just don't come out and see them. This is why LULAC needs to have a special focus on asking all our councils to please check on our seniors in your community. We must make the ongoing needs of our seniors a priority for important things such as food assistance, such as making sure that they get to their doctor appointments, checking to see if they are safe and protected in their homes. My dear friends, the women of LULAC have a special role during this time. We must lead and make sure our families are staying safe. Also that we are alert to those who are often forgotten and those are our seniors. Just because they don't complain or speak up doesn't mean they don't need help. Yes, they do. They need everybody's help. So thank you for including a panel on women in their golden years in our summit today. It is so important. Enjoy your day and please know that I love and respect all of you. Thank you very much. Good morning and thank you for joining us. I'm Consuelo Martinez, one of the women commissioners and I have been a LULAC member for over 39 years. I retired from Sandia National Laboratories as a business consultant helping companies to conduct business with the laboratories. Our moderator for today is Yvette Peña, who is the Vice President for Multicultural Leadership Hispanic Latino Audience Strategy at AARP. She's an award-winning marketer and community advocate with over 20 years of experience specializing in multicultural initiatives. She also serves on the Board of Directors of the Friends of the National Museum of the American Latino, and she also serves on numerous other commissions. Our panelists today are Annette Frankie, who shares the AARP Board of Directors and is the first Hispanic to hold that position. Annette is also a founding partner of Forestall Capital, a company providing wealth management advice to families in Latin America. She also has work experience on Wall Street, working for such companies as JP Morgan, Chase, and Goldman Sachs. Another panelist is Agnes Rivera Garza, who is the community outreach team leader for the Boston Medical Health Plan. And she has held various positions in the health industry. She's also a founder and executive director of Decide de Mujer. She's president of the Lulai Council 4969 and is the deputy for women for District 18 in Houston. She's also a member of our Lulai National Women's Commission. Another panelist is Mary Ramos, a successful licensed realtor from Houston. She has been a Lulai member for District 8 in Houston for over four decades. She has been recognized by various organizations for her work in the community. And in her work with Texas NAACP, they were able to initiate the opening of the first public defender's office in Harris County and help defeat the voter ID bill. 
with such a knowledgeable panel. We hope you enjoy the session. Thank you for joining us. Gracias, Consuelo. I'm honored to moderate today's conversation with our distinguished panelists. Thank you so much for joining us today. Let's dive into the discussion focused on older Latina women. My first question is for Agnes. Agnes, what is the outlook for Latino aging in the United States and Puerto Rico? What are some of the greatest issues aging Latino and Latinas will confront? Well, thank you, Yvette. You know, that's a, a very um, poignant question for me at this time because I have been experiencing uh, handling my mother's business. She's almost 77 years old and we've had to deal with a number of uh, concerns for her. And amongst those concern, I kind of label them into three priorities. So right now, priority number one has been handling her medical insurance, right? Looking at what the medical insurance provides, what's available to her and what she needs at this point because we've had to deal with a number of major, major issues. So dental, for example, not every medical insurance covers as much dental as you need or cover as much dental as your market, depends on where you live, is you're able to afford. So uh, for example, getting dentures for my mom, um, one insurance said that they covered them. When we went to the dental office, they didn't cover dental insurance. So we had to quickly and smartly switch to a, to a, to a, to a health insurance that would actually cover max out of pocket, max coverage from the insurance company. Um, and then consider if there was going to be any out of pocket for her, you know, so whatever the insurance covers minus what she can afford versus what the cost is for the market. So that's like a little formula, just trying to figure that out. Um, we've had to deal with dentists. We've had to deal with podiatry. You know, what do they cover? What do they do? And then how much does she have to pay? We also had to deal with um, expensive medication. Um, she had one insurance that her copay was $300 for her uh, diabetic insulin for one, and then another $300 for another one. That was very high. So we had to switch her to a insurance that would actually cover those medications and make it like a three month supply for $8.25 versus $300 every month that someone uh, on, on fixed income, you know, has a challenge addressing. And even with unlimited income, you want to make sure that you're getting the most for your dollar, right? You don't want to pay any more than what you need to. So sometimes the Latino elder don't understand that they have options in the market, that they can ask their doctors for samples, that they can ask their doctors for a generic medication, that they ask for, um, they, they, that they can ask to review the formula of their medications before they get on health insurance, you know, that they can make sure they can afford, that they can call the pharmacy and check before they go pick up any medication so that they're not giving their, their money and not knowing that they have options on what to do, that they sometimes can get a 90 day supply versus a monthly supply and it could be cheaper in the long run. Um, that they can actually shop around for doctors. They don't have to stick with a doctor that is gonna really, you know, put a price tag that is too high on their services, you know, that they can ask questions um, and advocate. And they can actually ask questions of their health insurance and also have their health insurance be the ones that advocate for them. So that's very, very important. Um, the second thing, Yvette, is looking at housing issues. Elderly right now with the COVID epidemic, they can't just walk into a housing authority. They're on lockdown. They're not really allowing anybody to go in here in Houston, for example. So people cannot come in and apply and say, okay, I want to get housing. They have a wait list. They have to just make sure that they wait. And then they have to do um, online application, which that brings me to the third piece, which is the digital divide. You know, I am supposedly a baby boomer. I'm not a millennium, right? So the millenniums technically are a lot better with computers than, than baby boomers. And there's some baby boomers that are amazing, but this baby boomer has challenges many, many a time. So imagine my elderly mother having to figure out how to do an application online for housing, having to do their banking online, she can't even figure out how does a check get, you know, you know, she doesn't understand taking a picture of the check and then having it, you know, 
put through until we explain that it's just the coding and the numbers what gets processed and then you know that is still something that people don't understand i mean they understand direct deposit they but they don't understand digital by banking um which is what a lot of the banks are doing now because they're not opening unless you make an appointment online. So the elderly is having to confront, you know, these issues of how do I make an appointment online? How do I access my services online? And how do I check they, you know, how do I pay my bills online? They can pay their bills by phone, but now they've had to learn how to do it also online and how to use their smartphones if they don't have computers to do that. And hopefully they have children that can help or a neighbor that can help, or somebody that can help them along the way. Um, that's those are pretty much it. My three things, you know, you know, there's much more. But when we look at number one being um, understanding medical uh, insurance, understanding what it's covered, what they need, and what they can actually look for, um, and then also looking at the limitations in housing and how they can navigate through uh, affordable housing even during during these times. And the third one is looking at the digital divide, like I call it, because there is a big gap in understanding how to uh, access uh, digitally all these services that they have for them, how to apply for services or how to pay their bills digitally and how to communicate with their children digitally when they can't see them and they have limitations on travel or limitations on what we can and cannot do. Um, it is it is a challenge. Um, and we, you know, we want to help the elderly, uh, you know, understand their prescriptions, understand their copays, understand that they have choices, um, and understand that, you know, they can actually use those little tools called their smartphones, because at this point, a lot of people do have little smartphones that can actually help them navigate and be part of this world. So thanks very much, because that's, uh, I know that some of these issues, um, there are resources out there for them, but it's, you know, we still have to continue um, sharing those with people who need to learn about them. Thanks. Absolutely. So, so many things, Agnes, that really affect our, 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 our older adults, especially in the time of a pandemic. So thank you for laying those out. I mean, I, I'm sure that a lot of us can relate to that, you know, for ourselves and also for those elderly folks that we, we care for. Thank you, Agnes. And now I'm going to come to Annette. Annette, are there steps that we can and should be taking now to avert the forecast of negative conditions now and in the future? The growing segment of aging Latinos, how can community organization leaders help support us? Thank you, Yvette. Um, when I think about the quality of life that we can achieve as we get older, I think of it along three pillars, health, wealth, and self, or salud, dinero, y amor. So let me expand on this. As Latinas, we make up a significant proportion of the caregivers, and all the studies that we have say that Hispanic caregivers are younger than other caregivers. They typically live with a person that they are caring for. Many times they have younger children living with them, and they typically also work a paid job in addition to caregiving for their loved ones. What this means is that at many times they are putting themselves last. What we have found, or and me personally, is that the advice um, that you get when, uh, when you get on a plane to put your oxygen mask on first before you help anybody else is, is very useful. And what this means is that you need to make sure um, on your health that you take time to exercise, even if it's just a little bit, try to eat well, try to sleep, and, um, and also don't postpone or delay any medical checkups or visits because many times we do that um, because we're taking care of somebody else who has more urgent needs. The second determinant of how we feel as we age is wealth. And as many of you know, I have spent uh, pretty much my whole career in finance. And I think there is a significant apprehension on the part of women on tackling this issue. And it is tremendously important for Latino women in particular. As Latinas, we are typically paid 53 cents for every dollar paid to white non-Hispanic men. This wage gap affects us during you know, our careers, but it also impacts what we get when we retire through social security. We are also more likely to have inconsistent work histories because we take time off for our children or our parents. Um, and many times what we're finding is we carry debt for others, particularly student debt for children or grandchildren. 
I'm very happy to say that ARP has wonderful resources to help you become more proficient in managing this part of your life and also to help you navigate tough financial decisions. Things like the last ARP bulletin, which has a section on financial reset, ARP's money map, the Social Security Research Center, and many others. And I also am very proud that we have been very active and continue to be encouraging states to pass work and save legislation. So let me go a little bit into this. Having savings vehicles available to you through your work is tremendously important in securing your financial future. And I'll give you the example of my mom. My mom did not enter the workforce until she was in her 40s. She is not college educated, um, but she was, she was lucky enough to work in a company that had a very good profit sharing plan to which she contributed diligently, but they also had a matching contribution. She retired at 67 and she at 81 is still drawing on this plan. So I have seen firsthand how this is tremendously important and she was very diligent, but she was also very lucky that she was able to, to do that. And then finally, there is the self part, right? Our, our own. And I think here, um, I, I have to sound a positive note. I think we Latinas are a little bit ahead of the game here. Uh, we tend to be close to family, to live in intergenerational households. And that can be difficult sometimes, but I think it brings a lot of joy. And we also have a rich music culture. We love to gather and laugh. And I think that's all great for, our, for ourselves and our well being. Wonderful, wonderful advice, um, Annette, and so happy that you mentioned the resources because we always need to make sure that we live in these multi-generational households, but that we know the resources that are available to help oneself and to help our loved ones. Really great um, information. Thank you for sharing. And next, I'm going to go to Mary to ask about our multiple roles as women. Mary, how are Latinas being impacted? by the many identities we take on. First, in the role of serving as continued caretakers, both for younger children and our aging parents. And what is the importance of self-care as we continue to care for others as we age? Well, let me start by saying from my life, I've realized that my children will never stop being my little children. And we're always there for children that need monetary help or paying for their college tuition. Uh, so we need to take care of ourselves. In, and investing in organizations that will help us like the AARP uh, be able to take uh, give classes on how to use a computer, how to run a computer. And there's a lot of uh, organizations like Comcast that are putting that program together after a lot of urging from uh, our organization, LULAC, to put a program like that together. They started it up north and it worked great. So now they're bringing it to the south where they will give uh, with, together with AARP will put together classes for senior citizens to learn how to use the computer, which is so important. We take on so many roles because our role as a mother will never ever end. So that's the most important role, role I think we play, at least it is to me. Uh, so we need to make sure we take care of ourselves. And unlike me, I didn't take my test and stuff I was supposed to for two years. And after two years of not taking the test my doctor insisted on, I found out I had cancer. And I would have never known because I wasn't listening to my doctor because I had other things that were more important. I mean, I belong to many organizations. I sit on many big boards here in Houston. Uh, and, and so I was putting them first and then my children in front of that. And and um, I didn't have time to go for those tests and stuff, but I, I've learned now too that it's really important for me to take care of myself uh, and uh, also roles, <laughs> your multiple roles, roles it, 
being a parent is the most important role to me ever in the world. But you also have to be able to help and belong to these organizations, uh, nonprofit organizations that help senior citizens. And uh, that is my, uh, another one of my roles here in Houston. I am the district director for the elderly here. And that's a come I work on a lot of programs to make sure that we deliver food to the senior citizens and we deliver turkeys at Thanksgiving and at Christmas. And these nonprofits organizations like the AARP and a lot of these organizations that with their AARP magazine give you a lot of options as to what you can do that will help you better learn a lot about yourself and how to take care of your family. Wonderful words of wisdom. And Mary, thank you so much for sharing your story and really stressing the importance of self-care. I mean, sin nuestra salud, without our health, we really don't have much. So thank you for sharing that. And I really wish you well. Thank you again. And next, I'd like to pose a final question to each of you. Let's start with Agnes. Then I'll go to Mary and Annette for additional thoughts. Studies are indicating that Latina women live longer than their male counterparts. However, what do you see in terms of our quality of life as older adults, physically, mentally, and emotionally, given a lifelong environment of daily stress and life's demands upon them? So we'll start with Agnes. Well, Yvette, yes. Um, what I see, what I see, well, that's my perspective, right? What I see from my perspective, from my angle, I see a lot of Latino women extremely exhausted. They have taken care of their families. They have taken care of everyone, like Mary said, but they have failed or they have stopped taking care of themselves, you know, because they thought that, um, taking care of everybody was the priority, right? It's important to get up and feed your family. It's important to go to work, but it's it, it was never necessarily a priority to take care of themselves, to do their routine exams and to handle those things physically. But then what I also see is an exhausted Latina woman that perhaps has also not dealt with mental health issues, that has not dealt with their innate losses or they haven't, you know, dealt with with being part of everything that is around them and feeling that if they're not taking care of a child, then para que estoy? ¿Qué, qué hago? What do I do if I'm not taking care of someone else? How do you take care of just yourself? You know, and that's a very hard question. How, and then what is self-care? You know, what is self-care? Well, self-care can be described as, yes, taking care of your medical appointments. Yes, taking care of yourself. Yes, take, doing your nails or maybe handling your hair. Uh, reading the materials that you want to read, watching the shows that you want to watch, spending time with the people that you want to be part of, and making the phone calls and connecting with the people that you want to be part of that it's no longer getting up and having to feed family or cook for family. But let me tell you, from my mother's perspective, when she's not doing those things, sometimes she feels like she's not useful and she's not part of things. But then she's also had to learn to, yeah, sit down and soak her feet. And yes, sit down and work with the medications. And yes, take your log of medications and be, you know, do your appointments. Um, and take care of the things that are important to you so that you can have a higher quality of life, you know? So for me is how do we, what I see is exhausted women. You know, I see them having given of themselves so much that there's very, that, that they think there's nothing left to give themselves. And it's important that we remind women, yes, there is time. You have the opportunity. You can take care of yourself. You can watch the TV you want, you can read the things you want, you can go to the medical appointments that you need, and that yes, you can ask your doctors and ask your family members lots of questions so that you are taking care of yourself. So that the time for me, what's important, Yvette, is that the time that we have, that, that the women have, the time that women are, are, as they are aging, that they are taking care of themselves and that they find um, health, happiness, um, 
and overall well-being. That's what we want, health, happiness, and overall well-being. Thank you, Yvette. Gracias for uh, those wonderful words. And yes, we have to help our Latinas not give up and let them know that there are resources yes. out there and light at the end of the tunnel. But thank you so much for bringing up all of those issues, those issues. Agnes. Mary, what do you think? Well, I, 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 I really believe that women, especially Latino women, outlive uh, men. And I think this is really crazy, but I really feel it's because women won't allow themselves to go again for the same reason I've always felt is because you know, no matter how old your child is, it's still your child. And you've got to be there to take care of them in case they need you. They've got to have one parent. So uh, being raised by a mother alone and, and uh, I raised my two daughters uh, until I got remarried by myself. And uh, I mean, it, my mother was the same way. It, it's, the mother is the backbone to a family. And I, I really feel that that responsibility is what keeps us living longer. Are you tired all the time? Absolutely exhausted where you don't even want to get out of bed, but you know you have to. Gracias, Mary. Uh, totally agree with you. And now, Annette, uh, for your final thoughts, what do you think? So I, you know, I think both both Mary and Agnes have, you know, have have expressed expressed it very clearly. We as Latino women ca carry the weight of the world, and um, we're always worried. We're always exhausted, um, and and I think also, um, you know, one of the things and going back to the to the finances and to some of the worries. I mean, many times yeah. some of the worries that we have, we really don't feel that comfortable talking about it and it can be tremendously draining especially worries about finances and feeling completely um, at a loss as to what to do mm -hmm. about it and I think we as women need to be um, very supportive of each other and trying to you know help each other work through that and I think you know not only organizations like ARP but just our our more immediate communities I also think that as as natural caregivers, part of what I see in terms of the despondency as, as, as Latino women get older is that all of a sudden they don't feel as needed. And I think what I always say is there is always someone out there who needs you. There is always a kid whose mom is too busy for them. There is always someone who Mm -hmm. you know, who is weaker than you and needs more help. So just just try to go out there and, and give as much as you can, because in doing that, you will nurture yourself as much as you are nurturing somebody else. I love that, Frankie. It's finding that sense of purpose, you know, being needed. Everybody is needed. I love what you said, and it is so true. Um, once we have that sense of purpose, we can come out of a depression. We can do more. And we can forge ahead, especially during this time of a pandemic, very well stated. Ladies, thank you so much for, for being with us here today. At AARP, our purpose is to empower people to choose how they live as they age. As women, it is especially important that we remember to take care of ourselves and to take ownership of the steps required to create the life that we want to live. We must plan for our future to ensure we create the quality of life that we want to see. It is crucial for us to take care of ourselves and also do what we can to advocate for women. It's for these reasons AARP is proud to work juntos with organizations like LULAC to keep the issues of health security, financial resilience, or as we say in Spanish, temas de salud, dinero y amor, top of mind for ourselves and our community, because juntos es posible. Thank you so much for joining us today. <laughs>